So I would like to congratulate all the presenters uh, uh, this morning for their amazing work. But I want to share with you a failure. Um, I believe that as an artist, it is my right to fail. That's the only way I can learn. Um, and so this is my failure, practicing what I preach. Last fall, I was on sabbatical leave. And as part of my projects for a sabbatical, I was asked to write a book to be published by the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, la UNAM, who published my first book, on acting, on acting technique. And it's my attempt to synergize what I have learned as an actor from my training in Colombia and from the training that I've done in this country since I came 21 years ago. Uh, and the book, of course, is going to be write, written in Spanish. However, for the last couple of years, my career has focused mostly on being a teacher and being a director, a professional director of theater and opera. And I hadn't done much acting. So I thought, hmm, I should at least see what happens if I go onto the stage again and practice what I preach. So I was cast as Friar Lawrence in a professional production of Romeo and Juliet by the local company Actor Shakespeare Project. And we performed at the Strand Theater in Dorchester in September of 2013. It was directed by Alan Burroughs and Bobby Steinbeck. Both of them are founding members of, of ASP and uh, wonderful actors in their own respect. However, as directors, hence is the problem. Uh, before I tell you about the, the prayer, let me tell you what, I, what it is that I preach, what it is that I teach. I believe that acting is playing the game of not knowing what's going to happen next. Characters don't know that they're in a play. Characters don't know that Romeo's going to meet Juliet in the party. So as an actor, I have to play with this notion that I'm inventing the future. I have no idea what's going to happen next. So I have to be fully present. I have to be responsive. My senses have to be illuminated and completely open so I can pay attention to what's happening around me. And by th that token, what I'm most interested in teaching actors is about being impulsive, following your impulses. Sometimes impulses can be very creative, and sometimes they can be very destructive. And that's why we have to discern which impulses are conducive to the telling of the story and which are not. So basically, in my teaching, or what I preach is to be responsible, which of course means professional show up on time with your lines learned and be on time with your rehearsals and whatnot, but also response able, able to respond to what's happening around you. So what was the problem with Actor Shakespeare Project and my experience is that I gave up. I gave up being responsible. I gave up during the rehearsal period because I cannot accept mediocre leadership. It is the bane of my existence ever since I was a little kid in Colombia. I am willing to follow anybody if they articulate a clear vision for me, if I know what game we're playing. But if we're dicking around, I cannot abide that. And that's what happened. These people are wonderful actors, but they're not directors. They were not able to coherently articulate a vision for the play. They took it for granted that Romeo and Juliet is a very well-known play. Of course it is, and that's why it's so difficult to make it work, because everybody has an expectation of what it is. And more importantly, Actor Shakespeare Project suffers from this narcissistic imperative in so many of our cultural institutions in which they have to have a hit. So they were not directing a play, they were directing a hit. They want to have a hit in their hands. And there is no way we can create art if our impetus if our goal is to be successful. It doesn't work that way. And particularly if you don't have clear leadership. So I gave up. It was uh, rather sad because I really wanted to have some kind of an enjoyment on the stage. However, it was not all terrible. This lovely young woman, Julianne Earls, who graduated from BU last year, was a very impulsive actor. And it was a joy to be on stage with her. And we created a lot of havoc together because we didn't follow any of the poor direction that we were given by the <laughs> directors. Um, I also teach how to be rebels, sometimes with cause, <laughs> but what can we do? Um, and this is the first thing that Juliet and Friar Lawrence meet when she uh, and Roman come to be married. Friar Lawrence does this amazing thing. He takes a huge chance on love. He sees the possibility that these two young people can heal the problems between their families. And 
because he is a Franciscan monk, he thinks that maybe some good can come out of evil and decides to, uh, to do this. So playing with Julianne was lovely because every single performance was different. Now, some of the performances were really difficult because we had a very poor attendance uh, to the play. You know, the Boston Globe gave it a very mediocre review, although they mentioned me quite favorably, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> But also, you know, a lot of people don't like to go to Dorchester, to, even to this incredibly beautiful building to, to watch plays. But we did have a lot of matinees for high school students. Uh, and there's nothing better for an actor to, to perform for 450 kids who are bored out of their minds or who challenge you at every moment to say, what are you going to give us? And those performances were particularly fantastic, particularly because Julianne was <laughs> constantly being given phone numbers, hackled by the people in the audience. So in this scene, um, it was always a lot of fun to be on stage with her. Um, and of course, I was able to get my head around the notion of what it is that I believe in, in what I teach for the book. So the book has been completed. There's a draft at the UNAM right now, and they're figuring out how to make it work uh, for publication for next year. But it posed the question of what do I do? How do I respond? Is that my cue for time? How do I respond when there's weak leadership? And the only answer that I get is I get really strong in myself, in what I believe in which again is what I attempt to teach my students. You have to have an impeccable working BS detector, and you have to use it. So when you hear and you smell it, you go, no, thank you very much, this is what I believe in. It may be wrong, it may lead me to failure, but this is what I believe in. So hopefully the book will be as useful as the potion that Juliet drinks at the end of the play in Friar Lawrence's attempt to save the day. It doesn't work very well for Friar Lawrence, but maybe it'll work better for me and for the students. Thank you very much.